Stuff after the game, uh, we saw Gundogan talking about Rachel's red card. You need to be sure you get the ball. Give the forward the opportunity. Let our goalkeeper maybe make the save for us or even concede a goal because to go down one man, get a red card so early in the game, it just kills your game. Uh, Rafa responded to uh, that yesterday saying, I prefer to keep it with myself when I think about those comments. I have my codes and values that I think you need to respect. Now, when he was asked if Gundogan had not met those codes or values, he said, I think I've already replied to that question. <laughs> well, Gundogan, speaking ahead of our Clasico, was inevitably asked about his quotes on Araujo. This is what he had to say. You know, that's um, how the most successful teams uh, develop, you know, and um, improve by communicating, you know, by uh, looking into each other's eyes, you know, and um, speaking um, for the benefit, you know, of every single person. But also at the end of the day, the ultimate target is for the benefit of the club, you know, because we are all here to make the, the club better, to bring the club in the best possible situation, you know, um, and to be successful. And I think uh, from day one that I'm here, um, everyone is aligned with that. Of course, uh, there are sometimes situations you know, where, where, where you have to clear things. But uh, the intention from every single person in this club is very genuine towards, um, towards the success of this um, amazing club. And uh, that is just uh, to reach our potentials you know, and um, to try to, to, to win as much as possible. Uh, let's get some reaction to that. Let's go back to the sunset of Madrid. Gemma and uh, Luis, your reaction to it? Yes, uh, Dan, the, uh, it's uh, very good to have you here, Luis Garcia, that uh, you have been in that locker room because, uh, in my opinion, it's true that uh, you can... Gundogan is a competitive animal. He has won everything. He's... Uh, being one of the best this season at Barcelona. But he was saying these words uh, publicly. To a, He's been here in Barcelona seven months, but he's talking about a, a player who has been there uh, seven years and who is a captain. And Araujo talks about uh, codes. What do you think about this situation? Well, honestly, I'm, I'm surprised. Not the first time that Gunogan uh, makes a, um, an statement like this one, uh, pointing a, a player, because it's true that Barcelona is a big mistake. And the first one who knows that is Araujo. And the second one is Cancelo. Those two players that made mistakes, uh, they know because they, they are professional, because they know the game, because they know how important it is at that moment. But everyone can make mistakes. If you address that publicly, the only thing that you do is to find a, a weird atmosphere into the dressing room. You can go to uh, Araujo right after the game and go and tell him, like he's asking, listen, Araujo, you cannot do that one. Or you have shot uh, on target. Or, at the end, mm -hmm. there are mistakes, and that you need the values and the codes that the Araujo is talking is everything that happened on the field stays inside, inside the dressing room. There is no to share it uh, with the outside. So, Dan, earlier today, also another captain, Sergi Roberto Kunde, they talked about, about this situation and they say that there is nothing else to talk, that everything is clear. It was not meant to be harmful against Araujo, but uh, we will be seeing if it has some kind of impact on Sunday at the Clásico. Thanks, guys. Craig, what do you think? Well, he's done a great job of continuing to throw his mate under the bus. He's bang out of order, and I mean bang out of order, and I would be surprised <clears throat> if the big centre-half has not had a stern word in his ear. It's not the most egregious mistake we've ever seen. Mm. As Louise said, you talk, publicly, you talk privately about it in the dressing room. If you think it was a, 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 a terrible mistake, then tell him in the dressing room. But everybody knows he got sent off because they saw the game, right? People are not stupid. They saw it. It's a red card. He's off. They know that. You don't have to come out and drag him under that bus. As I said, if he two-footed somebody or if he punched somebody off the ball, that is different. That's nonsensical. He made a mistake. He had a split second to make that decision. He had a player who was really quick on and he's tried to get an arm across him to put him off balance without giving anything away. It didn't work out. Let me point some out to you briefly. Would Ilkay Gundogan, when he was playing for Manchester City, if Vincent Company had made that mistake at the back, mm. would Ilkay Gundogan have gone in the press and rubbished Vincent Company? I'll tell you the answer to that. The answer is no, because he, he would have known that he would have overstepped that line, right? So if he didn't do it at Man City and wouldn't do it there, why is he doing it here? And as Louis said, it's not the first time he's voiced stuff about players. However, 
I think he's bang out of order here because Arojo knows he's made a mistake, but to, to come out publicly and basically say, this is down to him, he needs pull back in the dressing room. And I wonder if there's anybody going to do that. But he, he but, clearly doesn't yeah. think he's done anything wrong because he doubled down on it, didn't mm -hmm. he? Saying, look, basically, I'm just trying to get this Barcelona team to a higher level. And fair enough. And I suppose that he comes from, a, I imagine, a thought process that honesty is the best policy. You asked me about the red car. I'm going to give you my honest opinion on the red car and how it happened and why it should not have happened. And... I suppose if you just look at that in a vacuum, you say, well, it's not so bad. But the problem is, and, and to take it even further, because never mind what happened or didn't happen in Manchester City, in this game in particular, Ilkay Gundogan could have had a go at Robert Lewandowski, who doesn't step out to the shot of Vitinha. In fact, walks to, yeah. out in terms of pressure or lack thereof on Vitinha, and Vitinha ends up scoring the goal. Gundogan doesn't go at Lewandowski, but goes to, uh, to Araujo. All right? And says, yeah, you made a mistake. When you start singling people out, then that's a problem. And so what it tells me is that this isn't just about this red car. There's history. I, that, I believe that there is history of mistakes here from Araujo, from Jules Kunde, from Joao Cancelo, that Ilka Gundogan has been seen week in and week out that have cost Barcelona, really, any chance in La Liga. And he's been seeing it. And it's sort of been building up. And it's been building up all the way, going back all the way to El Clasico. This is when Gundogan ran his mouth after the first El Clasico in which he said, there are too many guys here that are smiling, uh, that, that are okay with us losing. And if we're going to achieve the things that we want to achieve, we cannot be okay with this. Mm. That's what he brought up back then. And I have to imagine that this has just been simmering. It's been simmering. And he sees the mistakes. And time and time again, week in and week out, and he's now saying, I've had enough of this. So if you ask me about the red car, I'm going to tell you what should have happened, what could have happened, and what didn't happen. But if you're going to do that, to your point, Craig, if you're going to do that with Araujo, you got to do it with Lewandowski as well. You can't pick and choose which one you go after. You don't build, to, to, to the point that Gundogan was trying to make, you don't build successful teams in any sport by throwing your teammates under the bus. Never happened. Never. It only makes for a bad smell in the dressing room. That's all it does, right? The way you build teams is by knowing that all your guys in your team, even if you don't get on with them, you've got the back, mm. right? You might not go for a drink with them. You might not play golf with them. You might not socialise with them. But you work with them. It, it, that sounds like what you and I would have been as teammates. Well, that's what I'm <laughs> you got to make sure that you build team camaraderie by knowing that you have your teammates back if you make a mistake. Because guess what? The man that's never made a mistake has never made anything. So we all do it. Mm -hmm. But you need to know, when you do it, that A, your manager's not going to throw you under the bus, and even more so, your teammates are not going to throw you under the bus. And bearing in mind how big a game it was, I thought it was way, way out of order from Gundogan. You also have to say, where is Xavi in all of this? Where is the manager? Right? Because, again, it's not the first time that Gundogan has come out in public. I imagine that if, if you're Xavi, if you're the manager, you, you address this right away because you don't want it he's to be. his own red car. Yeah, well, yes, he's <laughs> concerned about his red cars. He's, he's not going to be the manager of Barcelona any longer. And so, at some point, who, who, whose responsibility is it to control that locker room? By extension, it has to be Xavi. He doesn't seem to be involved in any of this. I remember when I was, uh, when, uh, uh, when I was playing at Celtic, I made a throwaway comment to a press conference after a game. And it wasn't about an individual player. It wasn't even about the, uh, our, our defence. I made a comment about we need to defend set pieces better than we are. And that was pretty much... I was including myself and everybody. And, I, and, and by the way, the, the next day, Alan Stubbs, our centre-half that played in Scotland and in England, he pulled me to the side. He said, oh, is that right, is it? Defend. And I, and I wasn't making a point about an individual or even a defence. I was making a point in general. And he got up, and he, and I know others were upset about it. And so that's kind of, and I felt that I'd maybe even crossed the line there. Right. Never mind, I never said, oh, and by the way, Alan Stubbs, he's not very good at, or Ronald Roo is not very good at that. It was a generalisation, and that upset the dressing room. So I can only imagine... And I'm surprised he thinks these comments are OK. Because mm. he's been around long enough. And he knows what he's done. 
and we'll see where we go with it from there. It'd be interesting to see, as you say, how Xavi handles it. It has been quite the season, hasn't it, for the former Barcelona star. He, of course, announced, didn't he, a couple of months ago that he will be leaving at the end of the season. And that kind of sparked Barcelona into a bit of life, a great run. It was that big defeat against Villarreal, which made him come out and say, look, I'm going. After that, though, things have improved. Not enough, obviously, for him to stay now and, until next season, which was discussed uh, ahead of the game against PSG. But Gemma, has it improved enough for them to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Real Madrid this weekend? It's uh, kind of uh, difficult to to know because uh, um, we've seen the, the last uh, games against uh, Real Madrid uh, where Ancelotti's side have uh, been better. Also the fact of uh, playing at the Bernabeu, uh, it can be or make also a uh, difference. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, about talking about uh, Xavi, this leadership that uh, Ale was uh, mentioning, it's true that some of the veteran players like uh, Gundogan himself or uh, Lewandowski, they, they somehow uh, did, uh, they tried to to cheer the team at some point until that uh, Gundogan uh, works, but it's uh, it's it's hard to believe this. Uh, the, the fan base are uh, saying that they want to avoid a tragic week because it's been a very <laughs> awful week for any Barcelona fan with a knockout being knocked out on the Champions League. Also, seeing bitter rivals Real Madrid a knockout uh, team uh, that is managed by Guardiola, and uh, you know Xavi uh, Hernandez very well, uh, Luis. Uh, how how do you think he? can cheer up the team to come at the Bernabeu and, and try to at least play for, for the proud and, and giving some joy to the fan base. No, of course, uh, you know that the Barcelona, Real Madrid is one of those special days that everyone marks uh, on the calendar as soon as they, they come out from La Liga. So I'm sure that they want to give that at least to, to, to their fans to win against uh, Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. There is something big that you can put in, in your side. So I expect Barcelona to, to, to do well, to make actually one of the best games that I've seen Barcelona was the first 45 minutes uh, uh, back at home. I think they were impressive. They controlled mm -hmm. the game. They scored goal. It was Gundogan, the one who, who scored the goal. And right now, right after seeing Real Madrid the midweek, how they struggle physically, they end up uh, very tired with Carvajal, with uh, Rodrigo, with Vinny Jr. Uh, coming out uh, uh, because they were so tired. I expect them to don't have the same intensity. It's always a special game, so mm -hmm. I'm not saying that they are not going to have a good game, but I expect Barcelona to try to uh, give uh, 120 percent because it's the last chance for them to maybe do something in La Liga. Yeah, and let's remember that two seasons ago when Barcelona, the, the first Clásico of Xavi as a manager, they arrived uh, here in Madrid as the underdogs and they managed to do a 4-0. So, then anything can happen.